Now, I want to start with something big. So this just showed up from Kickstarter tonight. So this is this is a brand new thing that showed up on my on my porch today. It showed up while I was out of the house and my daughter had to bring it inside and was like, oh, wow, this is big. This has dad's name on it. I don't know what it is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go get it because it didn't fit in the room. So I'm going to go get this. I'm going to move this back a bit and go get this and you'll get to see it. Yeah. Here. So let's see. This doesn't show my address on it. I'm going to show it off over here. So here, massive box. This is from the company Ludo Magna Studios. It is the Kickstarter version. I don't know if there's ever going to be retail, but the Kickstarter core box for Nova Adis Renaissance. Now, this is actually a remake of a game from, I think it's 2016. I'm going to confirm that right now. 2016, yes. So it's a remake, an update. This is a one to six player campaign game miniature heavy 45 to 90 minutes per game age 12 plus 100 page campaign book aka uh someone who's trying to be a, a gloomhaven heartbreaker right this is one of those big games that is going to um hoping to do as well as as gloomhaven and that style of game so step one is going to be crack open this giant box so i know our show tabletop bellhop isn't always about the new hotness well today we are So this is greater than 22.7 kilograms. It is, it is more than 50 pounds, <laughs> this box. Doesn't have an exact weight list. And no, you don't have to worry about uh, me using scissors in bad ways this week. Okay. Actually, this chair is working pretty good for this. I like it. I like it. Might use this for later. All right. First off, bonus, like, well-packaged. I'm impressed by that. Really well-packaged. Wow. Custom foam. I like that. Um, Yeet. All right. So, the, I expected a bunch of small boxes. As far as I can tell, it's just one massive box in here. So, I'm going to have to stand up. All right. Big box. Yeet. So it's in a plastic bag. This is definitely bigger than my Gloomhaven box. Uh, so this is now officially the biggest, heaviest board game I own. I've never gotten quite the workout I have as unboxing. There we go. Look at that. Nice, beautiful cover. Nova Hades Renaissance. We're going to kind of show off this. I can't show you the side side, I don't think. Hey, like, you know. So it does have the whole thing where if you store your games different ways. Um, what I do want to show you is the back. Oof. My gosh, this is heavy. So look at what we're about to see. Look at all that. It barely fits on my camera. Um, and my camera's far enough back, I'm even getting a bit of fisheye lens going on here. Because of how far back it is. So here we go. There's the list of the components. Um, this is going to turn into a full unboxing. So I'm about to open this up and show it off. I just don't know the best way to do that which I think is going to mean um, probably putting it on the chair over there and taking out part by part. Okay, so I think the best way to show this off is going to be like this. So this is what you see when you first open it up. This is a binder, a spiral bound binder. Okay, that's kind of cool. So yeah, what I'm going to do so yeah, first thing I find is a binder. So we have the binder and I'm gonna crack this open right now because we're unboxing this now. Ah, uh, you still, okay. Start by cutting this open. So this should be impressive, I gotta say. I've been looking forward to this. This was originally due to be delivered in 2020. Yeet. Nice touch. To, again, to protect stuff. Nice. Oh, it's not actually in the binder yet. All right, one, one small complaint already. There's the corners bent over here. But they actually put all the binder pages in a plastic thing here. Because this has a nice open it thing. So 
first off, like, look at the art on that. It's actually really cool. I, can you see the script? Yeah. And the front and the back, that, that's a neat artifact for a game. We're gonna open this up and we're gonna, you know how long it's been since I put anything in a binder? All right, haven't lost that skill. So yeah, Slate, you know what? I, I am not that picky, but Slate disappointment that there's a little quality issue here. So here you go. This is League of Cambria. Um, There's a prologue Rome. Okay, so this, this is an adventure. This is adventure books. You've got all kinds of info. Uh, to be fair, I know very little about this game and how it plays. So you're going to get to discover it. I'm now getting the waft of new game smell, which is fantastic. I love it. You need to bottle that. Give me some deodorant. New game smell deodorant. I would be happy. Some cool artwork here. Um, I'm just going to flip through this very quickly. Shows various dungeon setups. I actually really dig the art. Okay, cool. Very neat. So that's the first thing that came out of the box. So now we're back over here. We got more foam. There, there is a ton of foam in here. Um, I'm going to have a real hard time repackaging this probably. I'm going to keep the foam actually. I started eating it, but you know what? I'm going to keep um, the stuff that was in the box. Oh, okay. So it all goes in the binder. I don't know if there's going to be dividers. So here is one of the stretch goals. Um, this is the Tales from the Inn, which also, you know what, um, do I want to open each of these? Let's see. I'm hoping there's dividers somewhere in that box to divide up all this stuff. Production quality here is really nice. I, I'm amused because the uh, copyright is 2022. Here, I'm just going to put this in front of the other one and I can rearrange my binder later. So here we have the stretch goals and it looks very similar. Again, oh, a lot of text here. It's a lot of intro text. Again, I dig the art. Um, yeah, and to be fair, it's possible I shouldn't be adding these to the binder. Maybe part of the legacy aspect is you add stuff to the binder, but I don't think that's gonna ruin anything. I just flipped through quickly. I'm assuming I'm gonna have more of these. So I'm just gonna leave the binder open. All right, we have the read me first. So here's where I should, this should have been on top. So packaging wise, it would have been nice to have this on top. So this is the tutorial. It says, welcome to Nova Aetis Renaissance. Um, nope, my Latin is probably not up to par. So I may be pronouncing Aetis wrong. Might be Aetis. How to use the guidebook and the handbook. How to set up your heroes. The mission setup. I don't even know what this thing is, but I think it's like some kind of mission tracker. Here's all the maps. So yeah, this is a tutorial. Walk through, learn to play, learn to play while playing the game, which I got to say is great for onboarding. We talk about onboarding all the time on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. This looks like pretty solid onboarding. All right, we're putting that off to the side and we're back to the box. Okay, I have another stretch goals. Um, people are going to recognize one of these characters because one of the stretch goals was to add Altair um, from the Assassin's Creed series of games to the game. So this is just a list of all of the contents of the stretch goals, the new heroes, yep, the new bad guys, the new minis, rules for familiars, Zodiac cards. It's all the stretch goal stuff. So this is an all-in pledge. Um, what I don't think I got, and I'm not positive yet, because we'll finish unboxing, is any of the add-ons. This should just be the core game. Um, then there's a side missions book here. Yep, a few side missions. What's odd is this isn't hole punch. This is just like a soft cover book. Quality's nice. Like the paper's nice. Feels nice. Back to the box. The rule book. Again, the rule book doesn't fit in the binder. Um, so one of the things that's going to scare most people away, this was uh, going to be a 40 page rule book, according to the Kickstarter. What did we get to 59? So 60 page rule book for a board game. So this, uh, this, this one's going to be a bit of a bear to learn. 
Um, it does have a weight of 3.33 on board Game Geek. I'm trying not, not to crack, uh, crack it. It tells you how to use it. Shows the components, the golden rules. Nice component break breakdown. Bonus points for showing both sides of cards. I always appreciate that. Um, there is 3D scenery included in this box at some point. I am definitely not going to like go page by page here. I'll just show you. Two column layout looks nice. Lots of examples. Some little nice artwork on there. Looks good. We're looking at ladders and crates and other pieces of scenery here. And then how to play a mission, the travel phase, nice piece of artwork at the end. All right, rule book. It's a thick one. Okay, this, from what I understand, is an expansion for some of their other games. So this is actually an expansion, including characters for this game, for one of this other this company's um, Ludo Magnus Studios other games called Black Rose Ward. So this was something they threw in for people who own their other game. And I got to say, I do appreciate when companies do crossovers between their games. That's something I do appreciate quite a bit. Now, I don't have this other game, but I'm still going to open this up and show it off. So if anyone does have Black Rose Wars, they can see what you get in this particular package, which I'm just trying to figure out the opening here down the side. Oh, that's smart. The way they did it with the, they're actually upside down in here. So we are going to get, there is a rule book for the Magister, an index. Again, uh, this is for a different game. Contents, familiar rules, and so on. Now we have some cards on top that are shrink wrapped. Again, this is for Black Rose Wars, from what I understand. Sorry, I should be doing this over the camera. At this rate, we're gonna unbox one game tonight. So you can see the new characters. Again, I, I do appreciate the artwork they're using in this game. And on the back are all the same. Cards for the game. Here, just so that's less disorienting. These are all the in the oh uh, see they give you the nice resealable pack, but it just split down the side. Not a huge thing, but slightly annoying. I was gonna say it's gonna make it easier to unbox because I can just slip them out. So here we get uh, the owl familiar card. Yeah, I'm digging the card layout and everything. Text is small, uh, as expected. Um, then you have the cards for the various characters. We'll just go through those pretty quickly. Then there's some Hobbit size cards. That's creepy looking. Creepy looking Hobbit size card. So Hobbit size cards. And the other side, lots of text on these. Text is small, but it's not overly tiny. Looks like one cardboard counter. Yep, one little cardboard token with the owl on it. So that must like represent that familiar. And then what I want to show off here is, unlike some other games we've unboxed, these are full scale miniatures. Like, look at that. Full scale. Um, these don't feel like board game quality. Not a lot. Sorry, I'm just looking at it close. I don't see a lot of mold lines. This looks like it actually be fairly nice to paint. And this is this designer, or the, this artist's uh, rendition of a chimera. Desk and package. Keep it with your game if you live somewhere too humid. Now, here's the familiar. Oh, I like this. Okay, so the familiar's base. Looks like it'll attach to a hero's base. So here's one of the heroes, and like, look, that's actually pretty cool. I love that, actually. So the familiar. We got an owl. Thank you, camera, for being good about that. We'll pull these out quick. I don't know if I'm going to show off every miniature in every box here, but the quality here is really nice. 
Really nice. Um, bases are even like molded. Show the, the company name. Got a little bit of bent staff going on here. And I just noticed something. Those bases pop off, which I don't know what purpose that serves, but they do. This just says Ludo Magnus Studios on the bottom. Okay, that is a cool looking, to me, that's a Warhammer Witch Hunter. I would totally use that in a game of Warhammer. That is a nice mini. And again, yeah, they all pop off these bases. Interesting looking mage guy, like the dynamic pose. And then the creepy little doll things, which are creepy. So yeah, there's one part of this box set. Cards here. Um, these cards, I didn't like that they were sitting on top, but I just noticed they're actually, the box insert is, has slight divots to hold that in place. So supposedly these should work for both games. Whatever these characters are for, they should work for both this, um, Dark Rose and for Nova Adis Revis Rena Renaissance. So that's one of many boxes we're going to get to here. What do we have next coming out here? I'm just making a pile off to the side. Uh, you won't be able to see that on the camera. So over here next, we have a handbook, which I actually thought the handbook was going to be the binder. Contents. Oh, the various factions, basic skills. This looks like a rule reference. Various traits. So yeah, the handbook is your rule reference. Um, anyone who plays Fantasy Flight games will be used to these. The map key. Um, enemy artificial intelligence. That's that's quite the flowchart, I will say. Uh, this is definitely not any way a rule teach. I have not rented any of this. Um, for anyone who joined me at the start of the stream, I literally carried the cardboard box that came in into the room before we started. And then we get some nice big map tile. I like that. Look at the size of those. Those are, those are nice. Um, here is a Blood Bowl troll. A Blood Bowl troll, an old Citadel square base. That's how big each of these squares is. You're not looking at your usual um, one inch squares. You've got some city streets. These are nice. These are very nice. I would happily use these with an RPG. Various different terrains. Got some snow, some jungle, some magic symbols. No, that doesn't punch. That looks like it's going to be some type of puzzle. And then this very cool looking inside of an inn. So, so there we have stack of tiles. This one's going to be a little harder. I'm going to put this somewhere else. No, it's going in the same spot because I don't have a better spot. Oh, these are punching themselves. So, I did mention the scenery in this is 3D. You make three-dimensional buildings. And here you can kind of see these, these really want to punch themselves. But this will obviously make it. You can also see a tracker here and a bunch of symbols and various other tokens. Um, I can't keep those in there, so I'm just going to kind of hold this up so you can see. Obviously a dial. There's some spiderweb tokens. We'll flip to the other side. Okay, spiderweb tokens look the same. The others, some are different. Some are numbers. Oh, they're punching itself. Like, I'm getting stuff popping out all over the place here. So we're going to have to try to be careful not to lose anything. And then these buildings, what's interesting, it's reversible. So you can put the building together either way. This is only two of the tiles. Behind me is more. Here are more of that. This is holding together a little better. You can see more symbols. And again, buildings. One of the big selling points of this was the fact it included scenery. Which i got to say, this is pretty cool looking. Check that building out. You've got a small map grid here. Again, one of the one of the big selling points. A lot of little tokens. There's both sides. So I'm not switching back to the other view at this point. Okay. So then we have a pack of tiles. So maybe some of those were bonuses. I'm not even sure. So we have a pack more cardboard here, which we're gonna cut open. Now again, more 3D scenery, another dial, more character tokens. Love the look of those buildings. These are going to be great for my fantasy role-playing games. And again, it's a different building on each side. That is very cool. 
And then we have more. Again, different buildings on each side. That That is a nice touch. Uh, this is the Titan Pledge level. That is correct, which as far as I know, with no add-ons. So more scenery and even like these bushes and, and trees will be three-dimensional. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. These punch boards are fantastic. I don't think I've ever felt anything punch as easily. So I'm just going to quickly go through these. Okay, this is a major part of the game. This dial, I don't, it's got the um, astrological signs on it. And I think it might be something to do with the initiative system. But everywhere you look in all the adventures, it shows this with various to character tokens on it. So I know that's a big part of the game. This board, and there's a piece that assembles to it. We have more pieces of scenery, including some ladders. Because again, the scenery will be three-dimensional. Some bushes right down here. Again, I'm going to try to flip this without anything popping out. Uh, and I failed. There's, come on, there's a goat. You get a goat, a sheep token. <laughs> sheep token. And more counters. There's a lot of cardboard. Oh, nice. Okay, so I showed off a bunch of very square tiles earlier. Well, here are different shaped tiles for putting together uh, different parts of maps. Okay, this isn't it. There's more. Oh, you're odd. Okay, I don't know why. This one? Uh, everything else was cardboard. This one's card. Who knows, but uh, water. All right, going back to me for a bit, because we are one-third of the way through the box at this point. One-third. All right, we have... I'm going to do this one uh, here. The map for the game or, or DM screen? I don't even know. So this side, we have the map, which actually goes that way. We have the map of the game. Do I have it upside down? I do have it upside down. My bad. Map of the game for the game, for the campaign. And then on this side, it's the town. So like, you know, between adventures, you go to the city. Here's your map of the town with all the different things you can do in the city. This again is thin card, which is fine. I'm just surprised by the one map tile being thin card. Uh, looks like we got more cardboard and then we just get into miniatures. The rest of the box might actually be miniatures. Um, this part here, this huge thing, that's the other part that goes on that Zodiac dial. And again, I, I think it's some type of initial tracker. We've got a piece of scenery here that's, um, so here's the final piece of cardboard. Again, this, this is the piece that goes onto the Zodiac sign. It's got numbers one through 12 on it. Some kind of, like I said, I think it's for initiative, um, more tokens, some kind of well piece of scenery. Other sides mostly blank because these are going to be part of that thing. I'm not sure. I think these are range rulers for tracking how far away things are. Looks like the rest of this box is miniatures. So again, I'm going to show off not every miniature, but I'm going to grab some of these and throw them up. So far, I'm extremely impressed by the miniature quality. So on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, we um, talked about fantasy games, lots of miniatures. Well, we have another one to add to our list. So what I'm trying to figure out, yes. So this is fantastic. This is showing me where everything goes, where to put it. When I put it back in the box, I love that. That is fantastic. Thank you, um, Luda Magnus Studios, for including this. Because it always stinks when you don't know where to put stuff back in your box. This pile over here is now this high. I don't know. You can't really see. Okay. One layer of minis. All right. Okay, so we do have a lot of duplicate sculpts, so that's going to make things quick. Man, these are nice. I love the look. It uh, really reminds me of my Warhammer Fantasy roleplay days. It's got that Italian Renaissance feel, right? And, and I love the details and the style of this. Man, that is a nice mini. So there are five of what I just held up. I also like games that do non-traditional bad guys. Like, this is a very goblin-looking character that looks nothing like a Dungeons & Dragons goblin or a little demon. Again, they have these funky bases, which is just weird. I've, I've never witnessed that in, in a miniature game before. Like, I've seen it where you put different colors on the bases to um, denote different things. But, like, I didn't see other colored bases. So we have, um, whatever, again, I don't know what these characters are supposed to be. Um, you've got the, the ranged version of the little dude I just held up holding a spear. Again, these, these are, I would say, between board game and miniature gamer quality. 
Like they're they're better than your average board game by far, and they're almost as detailed as some of the best like D and D minis I've seen out there. But they do have the board game issue of like a couple little bent weapons you can kind of see, and it's a little softer plastic than a miniature game. So if you are a hobby miniature gamer, you uh, you, I don't know, it's hard to say. The detail there is really good though. So yeah, uh, very solid. Like like here, I'm I'm gonna like it doesn't bend that easy. Again, halberdier. Very cool looking. You get a whole bunch of those. This dude sticks out. I mean, I don't know if he's a player character or a main boss, but look at how badass looking that is. These are sweet miniatures, and these are not small. Oh, no, we do have a bunch of those. They're just facing different ways. So we have three of those. And again, reinforcing the Warhammer, we have a Pustelier. Then we're up to here. Two axes. Oh, full plate armor with a nice mace. That, again, what a nice looking mini. And we're over here. Full plate armor with a hammer. A uh, very legionnaire looking character here. Some very demon looking character. And one more in here. You've got an Arcubus, or it looks like. Now, I'm going to call out one thing. That's an awful lot of miniatures in here, right? I didn't see a single female miniature in there whatsoever. Okay, dig this, too, because then you know you put it the right way. All right, where am I putting this? So now we're over grabbing the next set. There it goes. Sort of, mostly. There's a lot more in there. It's not just minis. All right. So in addition to the miniatures, there is spots to put your other stuff. Um, note, there is some warping in. It's not bad, but a little warping down there. All right. We do have characters, and at least it looks like uh, there's some representation in the characters if there weren't any others. But man, look at this. That? Look at that. Mounted Knight. That is a chunky mini. Okay. Chunky mini. Games Workshop Middenheimer. Okay. Look at the difference there. Just the scale and the size. Um, interesting. This is the one if, you, if you're running this game and you know your players in it, don't show them this yet because that'll be an interesting surprise when it shows up. Uh, we have some centaurs. This box seems to go a lot more uh, fantasy. Okay, there, there, there's a nice evil demon looking dude. Again, the detail's fantastic and the weird poppable base. Looks like we have some familiars over here. There's a little piggy. A baby bear. And it looks like a puppy dog. That's going to make a lot of people happy right there. Any game where you can have a puppy dog familiar. You've got very PC looking character, though. I think the characters are the ones in tan over here. Maybe it's an NPC. Uh, very tiefling, tiefling looking character. Maybe demon. You got a big guy. <laughs> big butcher cook looking character. These are all like satyrs, I just noticed. They all have the, the feet. Uh, Van Helsing looking character. Uh, Nyx, for those of you who know your Greek myths. Or have played Hades. Or both. Now I think we're getting actual characters. Yeah, there's Altair from the Assassin's Creed series. A very cool looking nobleman. Again, I get a lot of Warhammer vibes off this, which is one of the reasons I thought it was so cool. Uh, this is another character that was a bonus character. I don't know if it's someone from a comic book or whatever, but it's a plague doctor. That was another stretch cool. Uh, 
female archer. We're gonna go back across. Guy with his wee hender. Female mage. Well, I'm guessing mage based on the staff. Thief. I am so reminded of the character from the D&D cartoon. If I painted them, I think that's how I'd paint that character. All right, what do we have here? He has the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if it's supposed to be a Monty Python character. There's definitely a reference there. Um, it's more, I think these are NPCs. Kind of speed up a bit because it's taking forever. Dancing girl with a weapon? Oh no, it's playing cards. She's actually holding playing cards. A very priest looking character, followed by a very monk looking character. No, sorry, that is more of a, a Mother Superior nun looking character. Detail here is nice, like that pose. Um, that definitely looks like some kind of necromancer. Yeah, we're getting much more diversity here. The generic troops are all men. Yeah, we have a female demon looking here. So there you go. I think that's all the miniatures, which I got to say, that's impressive. That is an impressive amount of minis. More than I've gotten in a game in a long time. Okay. The stack over here continues to grow as we go back to the box. I think this is going to be the end of it. But oh yeah, there's a lot more to show off. Including... Oh my gosh, this is heavy. Okay, this was the majority of the weight of the box. This bottom, whew. All right. Since we just finished showing off miniatures, that is one of the coolest driders I've ever seen. I don't know if they call it that. Or if you want a manifestation of Shalob. Very cool. Man, the minis are nice. Hey, this one, the base doesn't come off. This company is really impressing me with the miniatures. Uh, we're going to start with the dice. And okay, so these are just grommets for uh, assembling the various different turnable dials. We're not going to worry about those. We do have cubes. And I'm not quite sure the difference between these ones and these ones. They both just look like white cubes. So clear white cubes. I'm going to keep these separate just in case they're not the same as these clear white cubes because they sure look the same. Okay, these, I would say, are glass. These are plastic. There is a significant weight difference there. I don't know, again, what the difference is or what they matter for the game. And then we have black, smoky, I guess I'd say. Smoky cubes. Smoky cubes, plastic. Now, this does use a D8 base combat system, which you don't see very often. So you have a bunch of eight-sided dice, custom-made. Um, they just have numbers on them, but some do have some special symbols on the various sides. So, for example, like the one has a moon on it. Um, the five has a star. So there are eight of those, eight D8. Then three special D8. These are in black and gold instead. And they are different as they have like music notes on them. And the eight has a moon and there doesn't seem to be a one. So these dice are actually different from the other ones. Three of those. A giant pack of cards here. All right, let's sort these by the backs. Just so I kind of have an idea what I have. Okay. Okay, I think I'm glad I did it this way. So this is stack, and this literally says, in the Fox's Den S4, in the Fox's Den, and they're numbered. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I don't want to spoil anything from these, but these are just a bunch of text that tells you things like the hero's goal, the hero's defeat condition, and so on. 
I'm going to grab another one. This one is Convoy of the Rario. So these are all based on the scenarios in the game. Um, some have cool artwork. So back to Rock Succidia. Has some kind of alabastro. And then if you can tell this is another one where it has the Chimera hunt. So on. I don't want to spoil anything or give too much away. So that's what all that is. I'm going to put these back in here. These ones are what's available in various cities. So you have Rome, Venice, and so on. So yes, this is set in historic Rome, Renaissance period, but its own um, fantasy version. And then there's information on each city. So city cards. These, the characters, yes, these are the various... Oh, these are companions. So there you go. Some of, some of those ones we were looking at were companions. So these are the various companions, and I assume the rules are on this side. Digging the artwork again. Really digging the artwork in this game. Then we have various cities. So these cities are on the maps. And, like, you can go to Moderna. Various cities with information on, like, what's available there. So that's that pack of cards. I'm just going to work my way. Now, what's worth noting? Those packs are all the same as these packs. Look at that. There's your campaign. Season 1, Season 2. So I am not going to open all of these. So like this is point five. This is your the the tutorial, and then you've got whatever point eight escape plan, one point three. So I am not going to open every single one of these packs. Note there are more companions. A huge chunk of these these go up here, and to go with them are sealed boxes. No, nope, these what are these? These are really weird texture. I thought there was going to be some sealed boxes. What are they? Is it an envelope? Okay, no, they're envelopes. What's weird is there's not doesn't seem to be anything in them. So I am thinking there may be some setup required before you play this, because this is a campaign legacy style game. Because none of these envelopes have anything in them. So maybe like the first person who like whoever sets up the game needs to stuff the envelopes. And like look at all these envelopes. Yeah. Look at, look at all the envelopes. So that's interesting. I'm I'm assuming you were going to take these and do envelope stuffing, but I don't actually know for sure. To quote Rodney Smith, I will leave those for you to discover on your own. Huge pack of Hobbit-sized cards here. Um, I'm going to note something here for people who want to know. Look at all that extra room. You know what that means? Sleeved cards. Same with here. Lots of room if you, if I don't know if you can get card sleeves that big, I assume you can. Um, but I think it's more going to be these envelopes are going to take up that spot. Let's take a look at some cards. 45 minutes unboxing one game wasn't what I planned to do tonight, but I want to get this out. Okay, so these cards all match specific characters. Again, I'm just sorting these by back really quickly because I don't know quite what I'm looking at. Okay, and then hint bear. Hunt, hunt, hunt bear. Uh creepy symbol. Reward cards. Elementum. Elementum. I will flip some of these. Alchemy. Alchemia. And Percurnia. So now we're going to go back this way. Percurnia has all kinds of different metals. I think there is a crafting element to this game. So I'm just going to toss these in as I flip through them. Similar. Various elements. I'll hold some like there's the mercury. Here's the hunting cards. Mainly text. Some symbols at the bottom. Whatever this symbols were. Different character. Oh, these are definitely the bad guys. We saw them. Slingers, Lancers. We saw some of these in the miniatures. So these are cards for the various miniatures. These are various objectives. So these must be objectives for the characters or for these NPCs. Same thing. There's various objectives on the back. So I'm just going to grab all of these, put them together. Here is the treasure pile. 
yeah, we have treasure with the rules for what it does. Again, artwork's nice. Really appreciate this nice looking artwork. Every card had unique art there. And it looks like more resources, wood and lumber. Okay, that is that stack of cards. We have four of these. I'm going to have to spend half an hour cleaning up in between uh, unboxings. So again, I'm just sorting by back. Uh, those look like they're actually all the same. So these look like medical, possibly wound cards. Yes, that appears. Uh, it looks like you have, a, again, I'm reminding you of Warhammer, detailed critical hit system like spleen injury. There's actually uh, artwork on these. Yeah, different. There's a leg injury. Man, I'm getting a lot of Warhammer vibes here. Okay, this stack, which shows various characters and notes on top, looks like it's probably those characters' equipment. We're looking at specific equipment cards here. So I am guessing this character's specific equipment with the character on the front and the equipment on the back. We have a lot more equipment here. Again, artwork's so nice. Rules underneath, equipment on the top. Oh, these are slightly different. We'll pull those out. These look like spells of some sort. Which each, again, each one has its own unique artwork. That's very impressive. These are numbered. And there's a key, there's shackles, there's escape route. These appear to be achievements. Three more stacks to go. No, two, sorry, two more. Okay, based on the other pile, I'm assuming this is going to be this character's equipment. No, these are those objective cards. Okay. Some more of those objective cards we saw with the characters on one side and objectives on the other. That's that stack. Then it looks like we're going to get into cards for the bad guys, because here's the Chimera. Hunt Chimera. Oh, there's a lot of those. Again, on the back is various, looks like actions the Chimera might take, might be part of it, like it says, Bite. And then Hunt Arachne, which is that giant spider. Those must be two of the bosses. Same deal. It's probably some form of the AI saying what they're going to do, because it says Swarm of Spiders. Toss that in a box. Toss that in a box. So far, this box inserts seems to suffice well. Um, cobblestone cards with... Sh oh, it's the... These are the constellations. So yes, you have the, you have the zodiac signs. Then we've got a bunch more treasure. I don't want to mix this with the other treasure in case there's some reason. Again, loving the artwork. Last stack of Hobbit-sized cards. Okay. Oh, some more of these numbered cards. Achievement cards. These are reward cards? Nope. Familiar. Okay, I'm not sure what these are. Okay, these are more of those ones with the symbols at the top that all have different equipment on them. See? Various different equipment. Probably what's for sale at different towns or something. I don't actually know. And we have... Whatever the heck these are. Again, they're symbols based on the characters. So yeah, it looks like personal equipment. Yeah, it's all tiers equipment. Some more equipment cards. And then whatever these are, we have, again, cards for the various um, baddies. Okay. Now we're going to go over here. We have character cards. Two packs of those. Slide that aside. Because I do know one part of this that I, I'd like. 
I want to show off. This is a big stack of cards. Okay. So here, you have player boards that you punch out at the top, which I'm going to do it on this one. Punch this little funky thing, this funky thing, this piece, and then all of these pieces. And what you do with this nice dual layer board is you open it up and you put your character inside and close it to end up with a dual layer board. I thought that was very cool. So really well done. There's all the different skills. Of course, one of Altair's is Leap of Faith. So I thought that was a neat mechanic. That was one of the things that I thought was very well done in this game. So it looks like you have multiple levels of the same character. Let's see, Altair, Fatima. I'm not sure the best way to show these off. They're very slippery. Gregorio. Agaric. So yes, all the different characters here. And then, is this the other side? And I hadn't flipped it. Okay, I'm not sure what this board is. So these are additional boards that go with each character. These are actually all the bonus characters, not the base game characters. This pack will probably be the base game character. So I am going to try to slide this back in here as best I can. It's probably not going to want to go back in. No. See, these, these are great for shipping, but it tore. So, so what you do have in here is all the character things, which I'm not going to pull them all out. And yes, if I remember correctly, this does play up to six players. Six player legacy game. Legacy campaign game. So we're going to pile this here because we're getting near the bottom. I found more cards. We're going to put Altair on the top. We're going to get rid of this cardboard. So yeah, I'm not going to open up this pack, but these are the characters that actually um, came with the core game weren't stretch goals. So it shows what this is. This is the reference card that tells you what our various abilities do. So like the abilities are listed here just by name. So that's what that is. Two more packs. Got to say again, this insert, I've kind of got it off camera, but actually holds everything really well. So these are full size cards, whereas the other ones were all small size cards, not terribly unthin. So here I think is where you're going to get the various stats for the various characters. Yeah, it's the actual information, like on the, the the miniatures we saw earlier, right? The nun. Okay, it's just a nun, not a mother superior. Yeah, so your stat cards. Because, again, this is a tactical combat system. Yeah, there's the, the slingers, the marauders. Again, very cool artwork. Um, some other stuff here. And then two more here. The sheep has stats. Oh, these show maps. So this must be some kind of uh, events or something like that. So we're going to put that off to the side. Get to the big stack. Sleep cards. Yep, room for sleep cards. Okay, I have no idea. Um, These are like skill levels. It says recruit, novice, unlucky, cursed. So these must be status effects that somehow tucks in some way to um, show it off. They show angels on the back. Then we're getting a bunch more stats for monsters. Knight, the Inquisitor, the Spy. Knight, Technomancer. And more of what look like events. Then it looks like cards for each of the main cities. I have no idea what the back is. So three of the cities. Um, the various buildings in the game, a three by three house, a four by two house. Interesting. So it's like the, 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 the various pieces of 3D scenery, the rules for them, the apple tree, the tree, the bush. And it actually shows the 3D piece of scenery. I dig it. Trap door, cart, and so on. Emerald. Okay, we're going to put that there. What do the backs of these look like? Okay. Some kind of map tokens. These look like they, they all have ones on them. And there's some text here that says, like, read this section, read that section. So, again, some type of events. And then more of those status effects that look like you can put them on the character cards in some way. And that's it. We have reached the end of the road for my copy of Nova Adis Renaissance. So we're going to try to put all this back in. Look at how deep that is. That is by far the largest board game box I now own.
Uh, the rule book again, massive. Oh no! There you have it. Fifty-pound flipping game. Nova, Adis, Renaissance, hot from Kickstarter. Ludo Magnus Studios, a campaign fantasy, um, Renaissance period. Italian mixed with fantasy uh, game. Ton of miniatures. Really um, surprisingly well organized box insert. Uh, other things I liked was they actually give you a card that shows you how to put everything back in the box for the miniatures, where they go. That's awesome. Uh, extremely thick rule book. Um, the binder, which I assume replaced the campaign book. Like if you look on the Kickstarter, it says this is going to be a 100 page campaign book. I think the binder replaced that. Um, there were some stretch goal things that went in there as well. There's an onboarding tutorial. Uh, this looks overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, this this does look overwhelming. I'm looking forward to checking this out at some point. I'm not sure when we'll actually dive into this one. Um, but there you go. That is what you get in the box for Nova Adis Renaissance. Um, just published this year, 2023, delivery on Kickstarter. Uh, a few years late, just a few, just a few years late. Um, but just in time for Christmas this year. Thank you for joining me for this unboxing. I am Motuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet as Tabletop Bellhop, one word. Um, I've got a nice blog running over at tabletopbellhop.com. We post game reviews and gaming advice there. You can find me on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast. And uh, your podcatcher of choice where you can find that. And that's pretty much it for today. Um, if you appreciate all the work that went into unboxing, I'm a little tired. And um, unfortunately, this is very empty. So if you want to top this up, you can top it up at coffee.com. That's K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash tabletop bellhop. And I would appreciate it. Thank you.